chair, members of the committee. My name is Fritzy Archuleta, I'm part of CalPERS team. With me today presenting the long-term care valuation is Senior Pension Actuary Flora Hu. Thank you, Fritzy. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Flora Hu, uh, uh, CalPERS team member. Agenda item 9C provides the 2017 long-term care program valuation report. As of June 30th, 2017, the funded status was 99%, and the margin was negative 1.45%. Both the funded status and the margin were lower than last year. There are several items impacting the change in results. I'd most like to identify two major changes implemented in the 2017 valuation to the committee. The first major change was switching from a claim cost model to a first principles model to produce the 2017 valuation results. First principles model has many advantages over the claim cost model and is becoming the industry standard for modeling long-term care insurance. Slides three and four demonstrate modeling differences between those two models. The claim cost model is a relatively simple model compared to the first principles model. As shown on slide three, the claim cost model only tracks projected policy transitions from active status to lapsed or deceased status. The same mortality and the lapse assumptions are applied to all active lives, including both healthy and the disabled lives. The claim cost model provides uh, the basic information at a high level. The first principles model, as shown on slide four, models policies in greater detail by tracking transitions between healthy and the disabled status, including claim recoveries, separate instance, claim termination, and the utilization rates are incorporated by the projection model to calculate the projected claims. Additionally, Different sets of mortality assumptions are applied to healthy lives and the disabled lives. And the lapse rates are only applied to healthy lives. The result of using a much more detailed model helps better understand the future variances in actual versus projected values. The improved modeling and the refined assumptions inc increased the margin by 8.4%. The second major change for the 2017 valuation is the updated discount rate. The discount rate was lowered from 5.75% to 5.25% in February 2018 by the board. The new discount rate reflects the current LTC fund investment mix, as well as the current set of capital market assumptions adopted in June 2017. As shown on the lower <laughs> ends of slide five, the new discount rate lowers the margin by more than 14%. Two other items negatively impacted the program's margin and funded status. The program's 1.56% investment return during the 2016-17 fiscal year was lower than the expected return of 5.75%, and a change to the morbidity assumption increased the claim costs. Slide six shows a side-by-side -side comparison of 2017 and 2016 valuation results. Lower future premiums and the higher benefit payments between 2016 and 2017 are due to the maturation of the program. As you can see uh, from the comparison, the um, 
as uh, the program's uh, valuation asset as end of 2017 fiscal year is only slightly than it was at the end of 2016 fiscal year because of a lower than expected investment return. The program had a fund status of more than 100% and the margin uh, and the positive margin between 2013 and 2016. The 2017 results would have remained positive if the discount rate assumption was not changed. 2017 is the first year with a negative margin since 2000, 2013. We will continue to monitor the emerging experiences of the program very closely, especially the investment experiences. In the end, I'd like to acknowledge the efforts of the U-Haul's actuary team led by Clark Hattenkamp. As is just discussed in our report, this year's valuation was very much a joint effort between CarPros and U-Haul's actuary staff. That concludes my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. I see no questions from the committee, and this is an information item. So do I have any questions? Okay. Then um, as I see no questions, 9A, I'm going to move on to 10, Summary of Committee Direction. Mr. Osbuden. Madam Chair, I have one main uh, committee direction and I probably will ask for a clarification on the second one. The main one really is around the staff to bring back a review of the board member reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And this would include reportable hours caps and the threshold. And then in addition, we should also look into pursuing legislation for board members who are not reimbursed at, at this time. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that if we said anything about the charter school, if there was a direction on that. I'm sorry, say that again? Charter schools. Charter schools? Yes. I'm not sure if we had a direction on charter schools. I think we, what I wrote down was that we wanted to make sure that employees were notified, but somebody came up and said that they were being notified. So I, I think we're okay, right? Right. So then we only have that item on the board right. reimbursement. Okay. okay. Oh, hold on. Additional one that large dip between. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, that that was going to be my other item. I wrote that to be something we will probably provide before this board. Is that okay? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I know there was one for uh, Ms. Brown about full budget, which I think she had said that everybody gets it. So we will make sure Once that she, she has that too as well. Yeah. So I took those to be miscellaneous items that I will personally make sure that they are delivered. All right. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Public comment at this point? Anybody wants to speak? Seeing none, um, I adjourn the Finance Administration Committee meeting and 1230. Okay, so the Pension Health Committee meeting will start at 1230. Thank you. Gave yourself a little extra minutes there.